You're listening to 17 Karat K-Pop, the show that's a little bit of everything with a K-Pop twist. Visit 17karatkpop.weebly.com for more information about the show. That's 17-C-A-R-A-T-K-P-O-P.weebly.com. Enjoy the show! Today's clip show is dedicated to BTS, talking about some storylines from the BTS music video universe, some literary references, and other symbolism used in their videos and the music video worlds they've created, talking about, in general, why BTS is so popular and why I became an ARMY, talked about fun moments that the BTS ARMY has done, fun pranks we've pulled and stuff, and just overall reflecting on the legacy and the making of BTS. So enjoy, ARMY! I just need to take a moment because can we can we say that like BTS always knows when to release content when we need it most in our lives? Like the minute we are really like dealing with it, it they suddenly drop tour dates or they drop this kind of content or they have another special announcement or they surprise release a music video. I mean, they like just know they have this like sixth sense to know when the army is hungry for more content. So thank you, BTS. I think the best overall way to broadly summarize BTS's discography is that it is a mix of songs of comfort mixed with songs of triumph. So half their, roughly half of their discography, I would say, is the songs of triumph, like Not Today and On, that are very fierce, very in-your-face, very confident, and just great anthems for when you need to pick me up. And then you have the songs of comfort, which are showing their more sensitive side and just a great time when you really want to wallow in your emotions, like Spring Day, Microcosmos. Of course, there are songs, too, that really resonate at a, at a higher level than even all the others, like Magic Shop, because they tie into other ways they've impacted our lives. So the biggest example for me is Into the Magic Shop by James R. Doty. That was the book that inspired the BTS song Magic Shop. And basically that book is a story that's kind of fiction, but also tells, like, it draws inspiration from the author's lived experiences where he basically learned all of these anti-anxiety coping mechanisms through lessons from a so-called magician, a woman who ran a magic shop in his neighborhood, and he would go there every day for lessons as a little boy. So she basically found a way to teach him uh, coping mechanisms through by masquerading it as magic tricks. She was teaching him magic, how to control his mind. And so that way of, instead of it just being some sort of stern lecture about, you know, here's how you control your emotions and being, or being some sort of just flat out cognitive behavioral therapy session that would, might be pretty boring to a young kid, she found a way to make it very fun and thinking about why he thought what he thought and just leading to that introspection that helped him learn to cope with his anxiety was really uh, so impactful on his life. And so anyway, so that's the basic premise of the book. And so BTS basically read that book, recommended it to the BTS army to read, which of course I did, and then basically use it as a tool, both the song and the book as tools for our own anxiety. And they also said that Basically, they want the song to be permission to open the doors. So the BTS logo includes like an open doorway, like you're opening two big doors. And that theme has been consistent uh, even more so than ever since the Magic Shop song was released, where they they really leaned into that imagery of uh, this is your door. This song is your key to the Magic Shop. So basically... We're supposed to, our homework, I guess you could say, as ARMY is to create our own mental magic shop. Something in our heads, some vision we have in our heads about what an ideal safe space looks like. Whether that be full of, you know, stress balls or and other toys to help us cope with anxiety or be it a, a um, whatever calms you down. I mean, mu- music, maybe there's a stereo in there. Just come up with whatever image you need to... Uh, weighted blankets maybe, you know, a trampoline, whatever helps you let out your emotions in a productive way, and that is basically your room. And they basically brought the message home that you can go to that room in your head no matter where you are or what is happening. So basically they they give us advice a lot through songs and their book references that are all te- that tend to be 
uh, intertwine all the time, and Magic Shop is a prime example of that, where they have impacted Army's lives on more levels than just through listening to music, because then it's your it can be a go to in your toolkit really to cope is to go to your mental magic shop because the door will always be open and that's why their logo is those open doors their door is always open they also say you know at the press conference for the album love yourself tear that magic shop was on they said you know a uh, picture is all in there so when you're opening up the doors to your own mental magic shop when you need to escape from the real world for a few minutes, picture all the BTS members waiting for you in there. That's what they, they've uh, explicitly said, you know, picture us in there. So um, they're, they'll always be there for us. And so, yeah, that's what I mean by they do have some songs that just seem very fun and confident, and those are the songs of triumph. But then there's this other category of songs of comfort. So they really show both ends of the spectrum and everything in between. They really express their true emotions through their music, and that's what has led them to be able to create such an authentic and eclectic mix of songs. So whenever a news channel has a segment where they want you to send in photos or videos to honor someone or wish them happy birthday or post your back-to-school photo or Halloween costume, whatever the occasion is, um, the army is typically submitting something and probably a lot more than what gets through but sometimes it does get through and it is hilarious so Jungkook was chosen in the class of 2020 um, collection that was shown of photos that by ABC7 on their congrats to the 2020 grads but what's even better than this prank that worked because they they submitted a picture of Jungkook in his school uniform back in the day and so he looked like he really was graduating but the best part is not even that the photo was like it so seamlessly blending in with the rest of the montage, but the fact that the response when the news channel found out was just the best thing because actually when this happens a lot, they don't there's really not much of a response. Like maybe they issue a, a sheepish, embarrassed apology of sorts or they they make some sort of awkward statement and feel clearly embarrassed, but these guys clearly took it in stride more than I've seen other news outlets do, so shout out to them for that. Big props for how they responded, because when they realized they had put a, included Jungkook in this, in this segment, they decided, well, that's not fair to the other members, so then they posted a congrats to all the BTS members in our fake class of 2020 Photoshop picture of them all graduating. So the top 10 highs and then we'll get to the lows of the Bang Bang Con experience for me. But first, a few stats to just show you how cool and exciting and huge this event was. So during Bang Bang Con, there were over 2 million people who would be watching it at the same time. Um, which is really cool to think about all the different time zones and people around the world who were watching at once. And again, a reminder of how cool and uniting and universal a love of music can be and how uh, no matter where we are in the world, ARMY will always team up for events like this and be together in unison using our light sticks because the Bluetooth connections did sync up. So around the world, people's light sticks were lighting up along with the concert, and 500,000 light sticks, to be exact, were lit up throughout this event. Uh, in the first 24 hours, over 60 million views had been racked up, and hashtags associated with Bang Bang Con were over 6 million. So over 6 million people had used the hashtag Bang Bang Con in their tweets from around the world. Viewers tuned in from 162 different countries, and over 30 different hashtags were used associated with Bang Bang Con. So even if you have been under somewhat of a tr Twitter rock and haven't seen K-pop news trending on Twitter every day, <laughs> this was even more of that than usual where you saw on the Trending Now page a lot of references to Bang Bang Con. Even if you didn't realize that they probably were references to things they said or did during Bang Bang Con. So it was a really fun, exciting ARMY takeover online this weekend. First favorite moment, my first highlight I gotta mention is the rap line because I just missed the rap line songs and just the throwbacks and it was it was everything. Just their it was it was so cool to see their swagger come out more and more because I love that the through the chronological order of the streaming, you got to see them grow up. So like the first night, they seemed so little and not not 
super insecure on stage, but definitely not as polished, honestly. Their performance is not as polished, and their overall just demeanor not as confident in the first few years. And then you really saw growth leading up to the Love Yourself tour, and it was a very cool journey to watch again and watch in... It, it, was, a more, it was more apparent than ever before how much they've grown as artists, just watching all of it back-to-back back like that in a way I hadn't before, so that was awesome. Two... We have to talk about the costumes they wear for the musters. Obviously, if you're a Jimin bias, you agree that Jimin dressed as a puppy is just the best thing we could have expected. And obviously, when they wear their army bomb headpieces and all of those other costumes are just just gems. It was so great to see. Uh, and, you know, how can your mood not be lifted after seeing them dressed up so cute? Third, the dance breaks. Obviously, mic drop comes to mind, but also all of their iconic dance breaks Oh, I cannot wait for the day when we get to see the dance break for On in person, which will come. It'll come. It'll just be a while. Uh, Four, I forgot how cool their lighting is. So the way that they use these, even the lighting to tell a story in their shows, and especially the lit up uh, hot air balloon, fake hot air balloon structures that they floated around in for the encore during the um, Young Forever Most Beautiful Moments in Life era tour. That that was just, it was so aesthetic, and it's just very cool how they really create this incredible live musical-esque appeal in their performances that's just so next level compared to other per- live performances. That's why even if you're not a diehard army, they are the kind of act that you would be mesmerized to see in concert because they just are performers through and through. It's really moving monologues. And again, this is an element of BTS shows that I think even non-army can appreciate and really enjoy hearing because, well, I'll, I'll explain my personal connections to his monologues in a minute. So anyway... So his monologues, a few that I just want to reiterate a little bit of the content of because I just think it was very meaningful and inspiring to hear and be reminded of, and I hope other people find it very relevant today and helpful to hear as well. One of his monologues, he told a story about how a friend of his called him one day and just said, you know, I just wanted you to know that I'm so happy right now. And he was the why that person was so happy was just because he was out somewhere, he was outside, he was feeling the breeze, he was just really one with nature and just in a field somewhere, just sitting and looking at nature and feeling the breeze and feeling alive. And he didn't really have any specific news or anything to tell Nam June. He just called Nam June to say, I just wanted you to know that I'm really happy at in this moment. And I want to share that happiness with you so that you can feel some happiness too. And so Namjoon talked about how that left a mark on him. And he really started thinking about it and how it's a very cool thing that, first of all, happiness is contagious like that. Because if you do hear someone say, oh, I'm so happy right now, you got to feel a little good, right? Just as the same as you'd feel upset when someone around you is upset or a little bit frustrated maybe if someone around you is also frustrated human emotions are can be so contagious and so that was the an impactful thing to think about and also Namjoon mentioned that it made him a little jealous honestly because he was like when is the last time I just was like that just like not for any particular reason or exciting event in my life but just flat out just going about my day and sudden I suddenly stopped and thought you know what I'm very content in this moment and I'm really happy and he was kind of uh, wistful for that and so that that definitely hit me to hear that because I can definitely relate to that and uh, it, I mean I do have those moments now honestly where I'm just happy and content and try to live in the moment um, but wow it took years to mentally be able to do that and so that's kind of the journey that Namju went on, and I did. We both, uh, that's why people are so connected to BTS as a fandom, because we grew up with them, and so we dealt with the same emotional frustrations and roller coaster as they did growing up. And so it was a, one of those moments where it really hit me and reminded me how cool it's been to grow up with Namjoon and the other members of BTS because we, we've we learned these life lessons and experienced these same emotions together over the years and been vulnerable and open and honest about them together, which is really cool. But anyway, so I was thinking about that and just it's a great relevant lesson for this time too. It's just and when you have these little moments of joy to just 
revel in them and embrace them and don't take them for granted and share it. Because I I personally still worry sometimes about when I'm feeling good in a moment, how selfish it might sound and how it might just upset someone who doesn't feel the same way to open up and say, I'm really happy right now to someone who I know is not. But you'd be surprised at how not necessarily always contagious it'll be in extreme circumstances like the one we're living in, but how much it really can can make other people feel better. To know that other people are doing well is something that gives them a sense of uh, satisfaction or, or just a little less... It, 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 it lessens their burden to know that other the people around them do not also have burdens. It's just... It lightens the situation, and so I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's just something to think about, is that, um, yeah, being vulnerable can really pay off, and it can help others either relate, and you get through it together, or just feel better, and so that is what really stuck with me. Also, uh, the Namjoon monologue that is uh, just beyond iconic when he talks about, um, the purpose of BTS music and how it's all about healing and that's what Big Hit Entertainment was founded on in general, this idea of, um, you know, I mean, because Big Hit Entertainment was created because someone who used to work for a different company actually left and decided to set out to create a company with a different purpose that was a greater purpose in all about music where peop- where the artists could tell their truth and people could feel heard and healed through the incredible power of music. And so uh, Namjoon talked about that and how the he's that the classic example that I always think about about how BTS he says kind of exists because it's they view themselves as having value as a band if they reduce our pain level as listeners to uh, from 100 to 99 percent. If that's all it takes, that's still enough. And that one I think about a lot because it's true. And the way they talked about the song Magic Shop when it came out and how that is like their gift to us as a reminder that during tough times, let's all go to this mental magic shop in our heads and they are there waiting for us. And it's just they have such a calming presence sometimes and are there to comfort us through music, which again is one of the many reasons why I love music and find it so incredibly powerful and healing and universally, a special universal language that speaks to super universally relevant human emotions. So anyway, so that one always gets me choked up. So yeah, the taking away the pain monologue, the I'm so happy right now phone call monologue, the monologue with a personal connection to me, maybe I'll talk about next. So that one was actually when I saw them the first time. It was in Chicago, and it was during the Love Yourself Tour, the first leg, so before they added the stadium date. So this was like an indoor arena, and uh, Namjoon gave just this great analogy where he was talking about how in Chicago he went to this aquarium. And I don't know why, it just seems like every celebrity who tours in Chicago, their go-to tourist thing is to go to the aquarium. Side note, I just find that interesting, because I just feel like they're way better things to see in Chicago, but I digress. And so Namjoon was talking about how we saw all sorts of fish, different types of fish, colorful fish in this aquarium. And I believe he started talking about that because a different member was talking about going there. I think it was Jungkook or Taeyeon, I can't remember. But anyway, one of them was saying, not sure, I guess, um, they were not as confident in their English speaking skills then, so one of them just decided to blurt out I went to the aquarium and that was like their ending monologue period and so Namjoon basically riffed off of that and turned it into a classic Namjoon philosophical metaphor and so he started talking about all these different fish he saw and he pointed out how they all swim in the same tanks and then he was saying well that's kind of like this crowd because it's all of us, and you see people of all ages here, you see all types of relatives here, you see boyfriends, girlfriends, brothers, sisters, moms, dads, etc. And then he was talking about how you see people of all types, all races, ethnicities, and other identities in the crowd, and so he said, we're all enjoying the same music, just like all those fish learn to live together in the same tank. And Map of the Soul Tour, here's the dream set list, alright? So, the intro on... Of course, we have to start with on. How could we not? Then we we transition right into mic drop and then fire. So after those jams, we get to the high energy stuff. Then everyone leaves the stage and we do the unit stages. So 
after on Mic Drop and Fire, there is Jungu comes out and he gets to. I was debating what he would do in his solo catalog in terms of the BTS catalog, but I decided that since we got there's just so much to cram into one show and they have such a long discography now that I decided, well, since we already saw the stages for, like, Euphoria and Epiphany, those, t- those um, like, Love Yourself era solos, uh, that we should instead p- listen to and watch live versions of the other solos from the Wings era and then showing the transition to the Map of the Soul era. So we already did the Love Yourself era for two tours now, or at least two legs of the tour in the USA so it's time to give the other songs a chance to shine so I thought it would be really cool if each artist did the old school wings song that was their solo and then transitioned into singing their latest release it would show growth not just vocally but just like message wise I just think it'd be great so so Jungkook would sing begin and then it would transition into my time and then Jimin would come out and he would go from lie into singing filter. And while Jimin's on stage, then we'd have V who would come out and they would sing friends together. Then Jimin would leave the stage and we'd have V singing stigma and then transitioning to inner child. Then all the members come back out with a save me and I'm fine back to back mashup because you have to play save me and I'm fine back to back like that. Then they leave except for Yoongi who stays on stage for his Heart, which is first love, then shadow. Then Namjoon joins him on stage for respect. Maybe a medley of other rap line songs, so Hobie might jump on stage for some of that. And then Namjoon is left on stage to do reflection and his transitioning into persona. Then we have boy in love and boy with love back to back. Then Hobie stays on stage for his mama and then ego songs. Then we have Sokjun with awake and then moon. Then everyone comes back for some classics for Wings, Run, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Idol, and then we slow things down at the end and get all sentimental for Love Yourself Answer, Microcosmos, and of course, We Are Bulletproof Eternal, When We All Cry Together. Sounds great. Alright, so that is on Mic Drop, Fire, Begin, Slash My Time, Filter, and Lie, Friends, Stigma, and Slash Inner Child, Save Me and I'm Fine, Back to Back, First Love and Shadow, Respect slash Maybe a Whole Rap Medley, Reflection and Persona, Boy in Love, Boy with Love, Mama and Ego, Awaken Moon, Wings, Run, Blood, Sweat and Tears, Idol, Love Yourself Answer, or Answer Love Myself, Microcosmos, and then We Are Bulletproof Eternal. Quick warning, the following clip was recorded back in my college radio days of the show, so the sound quality is not great, and you may have to really turn the volume down because the mic just... I was probably talking too close to the mic. I was very... I was a lot less experienced with this recording thing, so just a volume warning. The the first one was for a song, the solo song for called Begin by Jungkook, and his video, the details you need to remember are that... Um, there was a self-portrait, and the rain kind of, like, made all the colors in the portrait bleed away. So there are all these bleeding colors. Um, there are birds flying overhead, and then his shadow, uh, at the end of the video, his shadow looks like it has big wings coming out of it. Um, then there was Jimin Solo, which is called Lie. Um, there he was in this empty room um, with, like, a camera focused on him and an apple in front of him. And then in the next scene of the video, he's in the hospital. Um... V had the third video for Stigma where he was getting, uh, he was vandalizing property and got arrested and then you see like he sees um, his abusive dad uh, resembled in the face of the officer questioning him and he's getting like flashbacks. So he has the darkest storyline obviously Um, and he calls RM for help but RM doesn't answer the phone. Um, Suga has the story called First Love, and in that video, um, the, what you need to remember is that there were a lot of flashback, uh, bursts of imagery with the overflowing bathtub and the car crash and the piano on fire. Um, yeah, I, there's not a good way to summarize that, but that's, that's about it. Um, RM's video for Reflection is when he gave himself the bird tattoo, and the colors ink from the tattoo kind of, like, washed away, so you get the bleeding colors again. I hope you keep in mind that, uh, there are 
probably more connections between Jungkook and RM's characters than anyone else. Um, anyway, uh, he also uh, drank from this goblet that with that some of the paint had bled into. It's a Hosen Bach thing. I'll go into it later. Um, and then he heard the phone ringing. Someone's calling for help, but he can't enter the phone booth because it's locked. So J-Hope, um, his video was for Mama, which is when he's in the hospital too, and there, he's in this room that's like knee, he could be, he's like knee deep in pills and takes them and then the world gets all te technicolor and it's a whole thing. Um, we had the interlude video for Save Me, which was him again dancing in front of the shadow of him that has wings um, added to it. Um, Sorry, I mean, the save, the save Me image was on, the word Save Me were in the background. The video was for Boy Meets Evil, not the song Save Me, just to be clear. And then the last uh, storyline was Jin's for a video called Awake, where he um, was at this fancy dining table alone. There were apples there again, the lilies were there, um, the Polaroid pictures, all those little symbolic details were there, um, and the... And uh, the final line that I keep thinking about that ties everything together is we cried a lot and we laughed a lot, but it was also beautiful. Um, and so those were the main storylines there. And they all kind of coalesce into this big moment, which is for the Blood, Sweat, and Tears video. So if you recall from our discussions about the Blood, Sweat, and Tears part of the BTS saga that really helped uh, bring home these points from the book Demian that was a literary reference BTS used. So Demian is a German novel by Hermann Hesse. It was released in 1919, so a, a little over a century ago, but it still has these themes that are still so relevant to the human experience, which I find interesting. So anyway, so the story of Demian really talks about that contrast between worlds, the good versus evil, I guess you could say. So there are these two main characters in the story you need to know, Sinclair and Demian. There's Emil Sinclair and Max Demian. And Sinclair is basically this main character who struggles between the world of illusion and the world of spiritual truth, the world of illusion and the world of just daily life reality and basically he has a hard time emotionally and mentally deciphering what belongs in what world and so it's a very philosophical story very introspective and basically throughout the story long story short Demian is this sidekick of sorts that Sinclair starts relying on to help him so Demian turns into a friend of his sort of and a partner in helping him decipher the difference and realize that he wants to tear down that superficial, artificial world and step into what he views as the ideal world. Basically, it's all a metaphor for the realization of the self. So this part of the conversation is going to get very phil philosophy-based and psychology-based. So basically stepping into the concept of a self and figuring out what that means is what the book is really all about. And throughout the book, Sinclair does continue to seek out these older mentors to help him figure it out. But he does kind of learn that ultimately who uh, the person that will help him figure out who he is is just himself. Super uh, resonant with the BTS Love Yourself whole concept there. And so there are a few main characters in this story that are of note. There is one guy named Franz Cromer. He's basically the bully of the story. And... His bullying basically leads Sinclair to meet Demian. So what I mean by that is, yeah, spoiler alert, but this book was released a century ago, so I hope I can give spoilers by now. Um, so basically it turns out Demian is a figment of Sinclair's imagination and is basically his imaginary friend that's walking him through the process. Again, going back to the theme of he didn't really need help all along. He had the tools within him all along to find himself. And so Sinclair basically creates this imaginary friend as a coping mechanism after the bullying faced after Franz Cromer gets to him. And that, that to me, this is my, um, again, these are all my theories. I don't know if this was the actual intention or not, but this just made me think of in the BTS Run Music video when everyone is like quote unquote jokingly shoving Jimin in the bathtub and all those other scenes where they are really like basically bullying each other just made me think of that, um, how that led to uh, maybe Jimin's character is Sinclair really in this situation. Just a thought um, because that would lead him to meet Demian who may in this situation be Hosek, but we can um, debate that more in a little while. So anyway, so basically Demian is kind of a play on this old term called Damon, D-A-E-M-I-N, 
or M-O-N, excuse me, and that is basically the term for a guiding spirit. So some view him as more of a guardian angel than a, an imaginary friend. You can use whatever terms you want to talk about him, but the main point being that Demian is kind of a not-on-earth figure. He's not a physical human being, but he is in the mind of Sinclair. He's very real to Sinclair. Another key character here, and this is another BTS storyline connection I've noticed, there's this character who, sorry if I mispronounced this totally, but Pistorius, and so Pistorius is basically this organ player at a local church, and basically introduces Sinclair to these ways to spiritually heal and self-reflect, basically a religious father figure of sorts for Sinclair's journey. Then there's this other character, Al Alphonse Beck, who is basically, he's a peer at Sinclair's boarding school, who introduces him to the dark world of drinking and other stuff that you can expect people to get into, maybe in the dark corners of boarding schools, or any school really. And so, so you have Alphonse and Pistorius, who are basically the proverbial angel versus devil, introducing Sinclair to good versus bad influences, vices versus virtues, throughout his coming-of-age process growing up. And so that just made me think, I don't know here, but maybe Pistorius, the one who plays the organ at the church, I don't know, it just reminded me of Yoongi's character who's always playing piano. I don't know, just something to think about. And then there's Alphonse, who is introducing him to the stuff that he shouldn't. That, I, I'm debating which BTS member that might be represented by, but it might be one of them. It might be one of them who pulled Jimin into the party room on in the Run music video. Or some, yeah, I'm, I don't know, I'm still thinking about that. But I feel like they're both represented at points throughout the whole video series. So, something to keep in mind. And then the, okay, here, here, this one is a lot more likely, I think, my prediction for what, how this is represented through BTS's story. There's this character, Frau Ava, and Frau Ava is Demian's mom. So the character that is Sinclair's friend's mom, and basically she's also, she's basically a personified version of everything Sinclair would want in a motherly figure, in some guiding figure. She's the epitome of all the good traits a human could have. And she's not real, real, but is to Sinclair, again, as real as Demian is to Sinclair, which is very real. And I don't know, you know if there's a mama in this story, you know that I'm talking about the mama music video and Hosek's whole storyline, so... And the statues of the mama hugging a baby and all the... I mean, the references are throughout the whole BTS video series, so I feel like that's definitely representative of the Frau Ava character. So I feel like the the ways that the Demian story is applied to the BTS world are way deeper and more thorough than than even I thought at first thought until I really started reading and just analyzing and thinking about Demian and the storyline. So, a couple of things to note here. They talk in... So Namjin's monologue before the Blood, Sweat, and Tears video is when he referenced... I believe it's before Blood, Sweat, and Tears. It's one of the later ones in the Blood, Sweat, and Tears saga videos, anyway. And he references a Braxis. A Braxis, and he talks about how that talks about the metaphor of a bird has to fight his way out of an egg. He must break out of the egg that he was born in to enter the new world before he can step into himself, before he can become himself. And sound familiar? So in this storyline, also there is a character Abraxas referenced, and Abraxas is a symbol of a bird breaking out of a shell. Sometimes it's represented by a globe or something else, but really it's all about finding yourself and having to step away from your past a bit to do so. And it kind of goes with that yin and yang analogy of you need the black and the white in your life, the light and dark, all of that. And so that is a key part of this storyline as well. Also of note here is the concept of Nauticism, which is basically a collection of religious concepts under this umbrella term Nauticism, which basically translates to having knowledge. And these religious concepts are basically focused on really trying to find yourself again, but in, a, in an optimistic light, really seeing the best in people and their ability to change for the better, and focuses less on sin, and these religious concepts focus more on 
learning from your mistakes, really. And so nauticism and abraxas are key variables to keep in mind, as well as the character descriptions from Demian. Also, I want to talk about Carl Jun for a minute, who is a who is a psychologist, basically. He collaborated with Sigmund Freud, who, long story short, so here's another BTS connection. This Carl Jun guy, he founded analytical psychology, basically. And he did it as well as, and Carl Jun is referenced in BTS work as well, but I'll get to the next connection in a minute. He also was a collaborator with Sigmund Freud, who came up with the concept of your mind being split into three parts, really, the id, the ego, and the superego, which all keep each other in check and try to balance each other out, basically. Well, one of them is really the balance between the other two. And you know what the word ego brings to mind if you're a BTS fan. That's pretty relevant as well. So how Carl Jun really ties into this story is that Herman Hesse, the author of this book, Demian, he actually went to the psychoanalysis therapy sessions with Joseph Lang, who was basically a disciple of Carl Jun. So basically, Carl Jun taught Joseph Lang, and then Joseph Lang ended up going on to become a psychoanalyst who was basically the one that Hesse turned to. So basically, a disciple of Carl Jun taught Herman Hesse, the author of Demian. So these references that you might see in BTS videos to Jun's thoughts of the, about the world, as well as Sigmund Freud's thoughts about the world, are all connected to Herman Hesse's thoughts about the world. Another BTS track that is really key is called Paradise. It's from the Love Yourself Tear era, and in Paradise, it is it has lyrics that remind me of some big themes throughout BTS content and just the quotes they say in daily life. So a key lyric there for me is the we that we deserve a life. So that's the quote in Paradise that I really that really sticks out to me. We deserve a life and those kind of lyrics. It reminds me of how Yoongi is always talking about like your life is valuable, but you don't need to put too much pressure on yourself to make it valuable. It's already valuable. You don't need to have a dream or a concrete goal right now. You're still, you're enough as you are. It reminds me of those kind of quotes that Yoongi's known for. So, Singularity references Narcissus. It also represents this story by Oscar Wilde called The Picture of Dorian Gray, which basically is a philosophy story where this man basically bought a deal that he can live a, what he views as this strong and beautiful life, as he calls it, or a young and beautiful life, something like that. He wants to look youthful and beautiful forever and makes a deal to make that happen. But basically, what he has to, the trade off is that he has to basically keep track of his sins. And so this, and then this, so basically he can stay youthful if the pictures of him continue to age and his sins continue to rack up. So basically the, the theme there is that he, he can feel like he's still young and beautiful forever in his definition of young and beautiful, but his, but the p other people around him will not see that because they'll watch his painting age and they will watch him his tally of sins continue to rack up. So the ways that other people will physically see him are changing even when he doesn't want to. He's resisting that change and that recharacterization of youth and beauty and things like that. So Quick warning, the following clip was recorded back in my college radio days of the show, so the sound quality is not great, and you may have to really turn the volume down because the mic just... I was probably talking too close to the mic. I was very... I was a lot less experienced with this recording thing, so just a volume warning. This is a story called The One Who Walks Away from Omelas, book by Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, it was released in 1973, and it, it's basically overall the story of a, ta a utopian town where everyone is happy. Everyone in the town is just really happy and content, except one child. So basically, like, the town got the ability, in the book, the town got the ability for everyone to be happy, but they had to sacrifice, like, a child that lives there. So, like, this child is living in misery, but everyone around them was granted happiness, and that was, like, their trade-off, and they viewed it as this necessary evil. So the whole book is around the theme of what is a necessary evil, um, what's worth and what's not. And so there are different theories about the influence. Some people think that, you know, Jungkook is representing that little boy, 
Some people think it's V. Some people, th- you know, people have different interpretations. Um, I, I actually thought it was Yungi, which is not a popular choice. Um, but one of the characters is trying to, like, embody that little boy from that story. So sp- the sp- video sp- for Spring Day um, has moments that were in previous videos, like uh, blowing out a birthday candle and uh, repl- you were surrounded by toys and then now you're surrounded by... Um, your, your, like, empty ca- empty carousel rides um, that look old and worn down and surrounded by piles of laundry and other chores you gotta do and that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, uh, a room that used to be, like, the old playroom for Jungkook's character, he opens it up now and it's just a laundry room. And it's all, like, this these thoughts of grappling with the passage of time and holding on to youth and things like that. Um, that obviously, uh, we, as we just talked about, is a video that has um, some deep significant meaning for um, just BTS and the characters in this their music video storyline, but also it has a lot of real world references um, that people have found in it. Um, and basically the overall um, message of loss and struggling to deal with loss, people think um, the video kind of alluded and paid tribute to the victims of the Soul Fairy incident. So if you don't know what happened, the Soul Fairy incident was on April 16th of 2014, around 10.30 a.m., um, where there was a ferry in Seoul um, that was in an accident, and there were over 300 victims who had been on that ferry, mostly teenagers, so a very young group. It was very tragic. Um, and, and keep in mind that it happened at 10.30 a.m., just for the story's sake. It happened at 10.30 a.m. So then the South Korean president, she um, people were waiting for her statement about this tragedy, you know, because after... After a tragedy, p- p- politicians are expected to speak out about, um, you know, just a message of hope, a message of assurance about something. I don't know, but something. They have to, you know, do something to comfort the people and inform them about what happened. So people are wondering when when she'll give this message because um, eleven. it's 11 o'clock, nothing still. It's noon, nothing still. It's 1 p.m. Finally, at 5.15 p.m., she did say something. And so it's always been a little bit of a mystery what she was doing that afternoon. So there have been records released over time. Apparently, part of that afternoon was spent at a hair salon because she had a hair appointment. Um, but people still don't know what she did with the rest of that time that afternoon. And... I mean, when this sort of thing happens, a president is notified the minute it happens. Very unlikely that she genuinely did not know. So people were naturally very outraged, and she wasn't responding to requests for comments. It was very odd that she was, it felt like she was so forced into making a public statement addressing this tragedy. Um, So, you know, parents of the victims went on a hunger strike. There were all these protests against her. It was a time of great political tension um, in Korea. Although supporters basically, uh, let's not give so much backlash to this president because we need to, you know, keep South Korea having, with, help South Korea maintain a strong reputation and a positive reputation. So let's stop, you know, calling attention to something negative about South Korea in the national interest. The captain was uh, of that ferry, by the way, di- was eventually charged with homicide from gross negligence. Um, and the incident was largely blamed on basically a lack of enforcement of trade laws and deregulation. Um, so the ferry had improperly stored cargo and done other, and, you know, overloaded with passengers and cargo. And so it really had um, broken some, this ferry, it wasn't a freak accident. I mean, there were variables um, that could have been avoided. So that further uh, angered these people clearly showed in this video you just gotta watch it and read more about the video because it's too much to break down now but basically they were they were um alluding to um the victims deserving way better and so um they they indicated clearly that they didn't care if they ended up on that blacklist um so like i said before if you're in the usa and you say something critical of a government official in Assan, um it'll get backlash but it's not the same um same extent or the same context really so uh, it's hard to compare them so it's hard to wrap your head around maybe if you haven't grown up outside of the u.s but um that really was a bold bold move for bts to still make this uh song and everything um despite a blacklist threat which did not come to pass um and eventually they did actually donate a hundred thousand dollars to victims families from song profits um and uh, she was eventually impeached in, uh, two years later after all these mounting tensions that had formed. Um, so um, I guess you could say there is justice that was just delayed, but there's never really true justice in that situation, right? So anyway, so people see um, 
this uh, the scenery uh, in the video and other elements um, as reference to the victims of that um, incident. So um, it's just a reminder that over BTS's whole career, they really have been so uh, outspoken about what they want to be outspoken about. They're just vi they they're not afraid to be opinionated and creatively express their views on society and bigger issues. Let's look it up if you don't know what I'm talking about. It'll be what you see if you just type "save me," I'm fine. Um, so the picture is like of the word "save me," but the the handwriting makes it look like it's just really interesting. So the handwriting makes it look like "save me," and then if you flip it over upside down, it reads "I'm fine," and vice versa. So like if you read "I'm fine," but you flip it over, it says "save me," um, and that's kind of what they allude to a lot throughout the saga. Um, and so that's what they did. So you got "save me," and then years later, "I'm fine" came out, and it started with the same noises in the beginning. So let's go back to what I said before, which is remember that the "save me" words were on the wall in "Boy Meets Evil," and in uh, there are previous references to that as well. Remember, RM wrote on the window about like "save yourself" or something, or you need to save yourself. When I was first listening to "Love Yourself" answer for the first time. Um, I was like, oh my gosh, did they put a Save Me remix on here? Because the song started out and it was just like, Save Me. And then I realized it was their new song, I'm Fine. And I was like, oh my gosh. And they have moments like that all the time. They're so, they bring in elements of a song that, and then like, like add them in to be elements of a new song that is about like the polar opposite concept so like for example one of their uh, earlier songs was um had this moment where and i'm totally blanking on what it was but i remember i heard this little detail in the back of the song that was like hey ho and then if that same detail is in one of the songs that they released last year that's really interesting to me um how much people say they're fine it is an automatic it's such an automatic response like hey how are you i'm fine like, that's just what you say. People always say that. I'm fine. Everything's fine. They don't want to bother each other with their uh, troubles. Um, and sometimes maybe what they really mean is, hey, you're reading the message upside down. Really, save me. I need someone in my life. Or I just need real help right now. Or I just, that everything's not fine. I don't want you to pretend to think that it is. And so anyway, so they uh, incorporate that message into their music which obviously is so relevant to their storyline. And it's really cool because you'll hear in Save Me, it's darker, it's heavier. And then I'm gonna play I'm Fine and you'll be like, wow, they like, their me true message is that they're feeling fine right now. They like got through that stuff um, that comes with growing up and now they are just in a better mindset. And so it was very cool. Thanks for listening to 17 Karat K-Pop today. Check out more info about the show at 17 See you tomorrow.